Now we're going to talk about what we can do with the molar mass now that we've learned how to calculate it. We can do calculations using molar mass. So if we want to find out the moles of a compound, here your book is giving you what essentially is an equation. And I'm not real keen on that because you don't need more equations to memorize. I prefer this part right here. Let's think about this in terms of dimensional analysis and just look at what the units are doing and work it out that way. So if we want to find moles of a compound, we take the amount in grams, and then we need to use a conversion factor that's going to re relate moles and grams. We're going to have the grams on the bottom and the moles on the top. That's the molar mass. The molar mass is how many grams per mole. If we're trying to find the mass of a sample in grams, we're going to take the number of moles that they gave us, and we're going to multiply by grams over moles so that the moles cancel out. So I think we have, an, yes, an example. Calculate the mass of 1.48 moles of potassium oxide. So let's approach this as dimensional analysis. So I've got... 1.48 moles of K2O and they're asking me for grams of K2O. Molar mass, molar mass relates grams and moles and so I can just do this in one step. So I'm going to take 1.48 moles of K2O and I'm going to multiply by grams of K2O and divide by moles of K2O. And yes, you should write the formulas in there. It'll become important um, next week. The units tell me what to do. They tell me whether I'm supposed to multiply by something or divide. So we get our units worked out there so that we can go from moles to grams then we need a conversion factor, we need the numbers for that. The thing that relates grams to moles is molar mass, and so we have to calculate that. So we've got K2O, that means we need two times the mass of potassium, which is 39.10, plus the mass of oxygen. Two times 39.1 plus 16 equals 94.2. So 94.2 grams of K2O is equal to one mole of K2O. The masses on the periodic table in grams tell us how much one mole of that element weighs. We're looking at one mole of K2O. It has two moles of potassium and one mole of oxygen. We add them up. We get 94.2. We stick them in this equation, 94.20 grams per one mole. We multiply by 1.48, and we get a number. How many significant figures should this number have? Three. We're going to round it off. 139 grams. I forgot what I was saying. Any questions? This is a very, very important type of um, calculation. This is really, really <coughs> important. How many moles of tetraphosphorus decoxide does a 250 gram sample represent? This is going the other way. What's the formula for tetraphosphorus decoxide? P4O10, bless you. Tetra means four, so four phosphorus, deca means ten, ten oxygens. So, it's a really a compound, yeah. So, they're telling us that we have 250 grams of P4O10. And they're asking how many moles. 
So we're going to multiply by moles of P4O10 and divide by grams. Not because we memorized an equation or anything, but because that's how the units work out. Understanding dimensional analysis actually saves you a lot of memorization because the units just tell you what to do and so you don't have to remember nearly as much stuff. Now we need the numbers that relate grams to moles. That's the molar mass. So we have four times the mass of phosphorus and ten times the mass of oxygen. Two eighty three point eight eight grams of P four O ten is equal to one mole of P four O ten. So it's that many grams, it goes in here next to the grams. Sometimes students, you know, just prefer to multiply. They're like, I don't like to divide. I'm going to put the number on top so I can multiply. You can't do that. Well, you can, but you're going to get the answer wrong. 250 times 1, if you wish, divided by 283.88. Um, we should have four significant figures in this answer. Zero. 0.8807 moles. Did I do that right? Is it okay to have less than a mole? Yes. It is. It's not okay to have less than an atom. Atoms are the smallest part. But a mole is a stinking large number of molecules. And so it's perfectly fine to have less than a mole of something. So would you just multiply that answer times that, the avocado number? Avocado number. To get the number, to get the number of atoms. Yeah, if you wanted to know the number of molecules, you'd multiply it by that avocado oh. number. Yeah. Avogadro's number. But yeah, it's okay. I knew what you meant. I think mole and I think guacamole, so I just remember avocado. Right, exactly. There, there's a really good joke <laughs> relating to that, but I can't remember the details of it, and so then it's not funny.